Hello, everybody, and welcome along to Stake Dora the Explorers Review Rel 1 and 2A. This is week 9, which is an awful high number for a 13 week season. Oh, he decided to adjust his windows right as I was offering up a segue for him to talk instead of talking. Oh, but you didn't. You, you didn't really like prompt me. You were just like, it's late. And I'm like, you're right. I'm going to turn the light on so it's not like a sexy nighttime stream. I'd rather have a sexy nighttime stream, though. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, this is week nine. It's uh, it is a high number. We're getting getting pretty close to the end. So the, the playoff matches certainly matter a lot now. We're going to be paying attention to those uh, whenever possible or the matches that could decide playoff things. Um, people are making the decisions about next season, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty fun. Um, we are going to do things a little bit, tiny bit differently this week. Uh, we're going to just start right away with um, Rel uh, 2A and the results and the predictions, etc. Because uh, we were planning on watching a match from Rel 1 that was recommended to us, but we were dumb and forgot to like load up that replay at some point. And by the time we went to do it today, uh, it had expired. So the person who played it, is going to be sending it to us ideally if they get home in time they're still on their way home uh, so they might not be here before we get there uh, but we're going to start with 2a to give uh, give them a little bit of time uh, to get here and, and then send us off the, the replay file worst case we can watch something else it's not really a huge deal but we did it was suggested to us so we want to we want to reward people sending us messages about about that kind of thing so we're gonna we're gonna try to do that it might not happen but that's that's why we're gonna start things in a little bit uh a little bit different order this time. As long as it doesn't look like a total blowout. Speaking of total blowouts, we have Marvelous Creatures versus Battle Brothers, where Calric won 2-1, to one, as we predicted he would, on the back of getting 11 breaks into 7 casts. That's a lot of pluses on... Uh, well, actually, it's creatures. almost all fouls, though. Because, look, you can see Armor Break Plus is only 3, so 4 casts were from failed dodges or fouls. And knowing Calric, a good number of them. I, I feel like Pow Beggar, the lineman of Dirty Player, did a lot of work this game. Did he ever? Look at this. Badly hurt, badly hurt. MNG, MNG dead on the rest on the Raj kick lino. MNG on the Raj lino. MNG on the dodge lino. Yeah, I mean that really sucks. At least the um, at least the MNGs are on like the linos. I mean, I know it's still really bad. That is that is not a good thing to happen. But like, uh, he's also down his, but he's also down his mighty blow tackle blitzer and his guard lino. Like yeah. he is, this is a fairly neutered dark elf team for the next game. Oh, he'll have both witches and he'll have you know two two of the the blitzers and I think three because he had four. Just one was missing for this game, so you know it could have been worse given that amount of injuries. But man, that sucks. Like that's pretty bad, frankly. Um, and Witch Hunters took an MNG in return, so no Raj, Firm, Mighty Blow uh, blocker for Calyrex because he cannot go at least one game without a a blocker getting injured somehow. Or, like, worse than a badly hurt. Sorry, there's a really loud plane going by. I can hear it. Uh, uh, but yeah, Marvelous Creatures actually outblocked the um, Fend. Oh, but. It, no, but that's Fend, yeah, never mind. Fend and Frenzy combines for terrible things. Yeah, it does. It can count three times, we discovered. Uh, it's all sorts of weird. If um, Fend is manual and you say no, then it counts for three on a Frenzy. Yeah, which is which is kind of strange. It's, well, it's, it's still just plus one, right? Because it would be two blocks normally. If it was yeah, just... no, it's true. It's, it's not that ridiculous. But it's, it's still uh, annoying. Then we had Here We Fall, Fall, and Orxploitation Cinema from uh, Das Schuttenheim. Oh, no, it counts as four. We discovered this, right? Because oh, the yeah. second block, it also fends. So it counts as four. So it's still plus one because you still only have two blocks. But uh, if you do allow them to push you the first, or to follow the first time for the second frenzy hit, uh, it counts as four. Because, it, But it's only a fend is on manual, which is very weird. Um, I predicted here we fall for this one, and I think you predicted the same. Um, it was a tie. It was. We just didn't think that there was going to be enough uh, like tackle and sort of orc, orc stuff to be able to deal with the uh, the amount of elf nonsense that occurred. I mean, one tree offense did get two passes to level along with the MVP. Uh, the catcher got two touchdowns, so two passes into two touchdowns is is what I assume happened there. But uh, Orc Exploitation Cinema were able to do that as well with two yeah, passes two, from two the passes thrower. Well, two <laughs> blitzers and levels one of the blitzers on it. So 
everybody getting things they want in that game, it looks like. Uh, there's a dead rando lino, which does hurt because it's eating into your potential for a bench, but you don't really care that much. Yeah, the uh, the thing that really... There's no injuries on the elves, which I think uh, tells a bit of a story. Um, although, if there were more, you know, you'd expect the uh, the orcs to win. With none, you'd probably expect the elves to win, but um, there were some. There were enough KOs, maybe, that it ended up being 2-2 rather than like 2-1 for the elves or something like that. Yep, uh, 58 blocks for the orcs is a hell of a lot. The uh, elves kind of got off uh, pretty easy given how many how many blocks they took. They've got the expected number of um, the expected number of removals on 16 breaks, but 16 breaks on 58 seems low given that there is a good amount of money blow kicking around. But uh, only t obviously that's, two of them are attached to tackle, and one of them is on a blork, so yeah. Kind of slow. Still, line, line, oh, there's four mighty blow even. So, anyway, um, elves may be getting away with a bit of get a, getting away with a bit of murder there, or lack of murder rather. You get the interest. We've got the uh, the set of skills for the the catcher now with um, block and sidestep. So he's blodge step on that catcher, and he just leveled. So what do we what do we take there? I guess we'll see. Probably diving tackle. He's on normal. Uh, one tree offense, um, getting a level up as well. He's got all the passing it's skills. Not a stat, probably just block. Or dodge, probably dodge. Yeah, that would make sense to me. <clears throat> then we had Lachlan Long Tongues from Urs versus Anagram Catastrophe Uber the Nuber. Uh, Big result on this one. Dead Arch Teapots, the strength up gut, oh, gut runner. Wow, yeah. This is a big result for for several reasons. One, I mean, we predicted the um, the rats because the rats are a little bit difficult for the uh, lizards to deal with. Uh, but two, this catapults Urs. Like, if we'll see in the standings later, this does a lot for Urs in terms of the standings. Um, so this is a really big match for him to win. And, uh, yeah, dead Arch Teapots is, you know, everybody in the division should be thanking Erst for the next four weeks. <laughs> that's going to yeah. that's gonna help uh, other teams quite a bit. He still has the uh, the natural one-turner and the uh, the strip ball player, but the, the strength the strength three gutter runners is such a nightmare if he has the ball because you can't get free two or three dies on them like you can as most other teams. Um, in return, we took a, a badly hurt Saurus and a dead skink, but... One, it's a badly hurt, and two, this kink is a rookie, so who cares? Um, Garadal getting both touchdowns for the uh, the Lizards. That's the Agi skink, doing some Agi nonsense. MVP on yep. the Crocs is good, too. Close to a level there. Yep, good stand for him on him, which is always nice for a chance of block. Um, yeah, I mean, great game for Urs. Uh, nearly even blocks, but the the Rats couldn't find armor breaks with their Claw Mighty Blow, it looks like. Um, you got one, on but the... that's not a lot. Yeah, they got... Uh, Three removals and seven, which is expected, but I would imagine that a good, he just maybe was too pressured to get good claw muddy blow hits a lot of the time. And then 15 breaks received for uh, a good number of removals makes this a, a lizard game. That's how it can go sometimes. If the lizards get on, on top of the rats and the rats are, you know, have fewer options because the lizards have gotten very up in their face and yeah. they're looking at a bunch of three plus dodges on all of their non gutter runner pieces. Um, it can get really tough really fast. The, the lizards can make uh, getting the good claw mighty blow hits a little awkward, just considering the rats are strength three. So it's going to take three rats, you know, to get a two die on a Saurus. And if you don't get the like removals quickly, or the Saurus get into good positions with the guard and stuff, it, it kind of neuters the effectiveness. Yeah, of like you claw. can you can lose this game by a couple of things going. Like I lost a lizard game to Rolling Red this year because or this season because. I failed a couple of clutch things, like I snaked a dodge, basically, that let him put his entire team in contact with my team. And once you get in that position, like you're so aggressively outguarded, you can't get good blocks, you're looking at a bunch of three plus dodges to get away. If those don't, if you're like disengaging at that point doesn't work out, then you just spend the rest of the match getting the crack kick. Yeah, if, if starting your turn, like if you have to do a three plus dodge to start your turn, you're not really in a good position. Um, and we had. Atomics and our name is Legion, so it's the Rowdy Rebel Rousers versus Talk Show Terror. Um, we, I had predicted, um, let me find it. I predicted the Rowdy Rebel Rousers here. And what did you do? I think the same. Did I pick the Necro? No, you picked no. the same. Yep. Um, just, you know, pretty big Nurgle team, uh, frankly. We figured they would do a lot of work on the Necro, but the Necro did a lot of work on the Nurgle. However, almost all of that was on Rotters. So but the one that wasn't on Rodgers was on a legend Nurgle warrior who got armor busted and did not get better. Nope, that's not, I know the pain of that. It sucks. Um, but there was, you know, uh, f five. Do you see that Big Fist Reborn is a plus strength Rodger? Uh, yes. 
<laughs> That's great. Um, so the Rowdy Rebel Rousers took five Kaz, and uh, th three of them were on Rotters. One of them didn't get better, so one regen working. Um, you know, Rotters don't have regen, it turns out. <clears throat> but that that the Rotter injuries are not terrible. That's what they're there for. Uh, and as long as one of those came close to the end of the game, he still had three Rotters for most of it, which is all he really needs. He doesn't have to worry too much about that. So... Our name is Legion doing work on Atomics, but that's what those Rotters are there for, so they, they did their job. Both kind of did, did work on each other. Like, so many armor breaks into, I mean, four KOs apiece, five Kaz for Atomics sustain, three for the Tactical Terror, yeah. two or three stuck versus... Uh, so, like, both are 50-50 perfectly on regen, though, I bet. Yeah, it looks like it could have been pretty interesting to watch, but, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, Atomics... Uh, came out on top. This seems like a very typical nurgle type thing where you scored on your drive and then you stopped them from scoring and then you win 1-0. It happens a lot as Nurgle um, or the other way around. Uh, two zombie levels, kind of not really what you want. Uh, one level on Horny Cricket, though, to get a second Legend Nurgle Warrior on this team, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I would probably take Stand Firm there, unless you got some bunch of stat, uh, a stat, like if you got Strength, that would take Strength, but uh, stand farm is probably the other good option. Uh, yeah, just makes it annoying. I think, I'd, yeah, I would take stand firm over movement, certainly. So, yeah, the only thing I would consider taking over that is strength on a double, maybe dodge, would, but even then, stand firm might be better. I would take strength, dodge, stand firm in that order, depending on what you rolled. Uh, just blodge is really useful. Um, stand, although given that he's like a claw muddy blow guard piece, stand firm, I wouldn't be upset if you skip the double to take stand firm. Yeah, it's really nice in bash matchups to have that threat of you can't push me away to save yourself from claw even on like a one die or a red die. Yeah, people aren't gonna one die you anymore because or like they can't push like and if they just get a push, you get to stand from there and then claw them back. Like you get more, you'll get more value out of the claw muddy blow that way because you get to make more claw muddy blow hits than you would otherwise. Also, the stand from helps with the guard can make a uh, pushing away guard awkward for when you're being defensive or whatever like so it's, it's pretty helpful i wouldn't hate dodge yeah. either i think either is fine and then in another yeah. big nurgle has a bad time with rotters we have yayo versus yep. i should blanks it, he won one zero but every single rotter died. doof killed no, two of my okay. three rotters this week so like i right it's not a, not been a good week for rotters this one's not technically dead he's just armor busted but that is a dead rotter so uh, uh Probably, yeah. Depends. If it helps you get a bench, keep him. If it doesn't help you get a bench, he's not worth keeping. That's the only thing that really Yeah, matters. I mean, you never want to put a, an armor-busted piece on the line, so... No, but if, if it comes down to having 12 players with one of them armor-busted versus just having 11, I would rather just have 12, because he can just foul yeah. or whatever. Um, and as we said, uh, he did take Borak, and Borak did nothing. We don't know. We, he doesn't look like Borak got Kaz, at least. Um, it doesn't look like the, uh, the Chaos really took any damage. No. 36 blocks into 17 breaks, resulting in 7 KOs and 0 Kaz. He got, he got 1 Kaz sustained, uh, but in Apo, or that was the badly hurt, and Apo not even used there, uh, either from a dodge or a foul or whatever. Um, but that's kind of what we like expected. I mean, Yeo has a bit more kill, but all I shoot blanks has his kill. He has no options other than kill, so he kind of has to bank on that pretty heavily. And it's quite easy to get those hits on rotters. Um, but once again, the rotters are doing their job, right? Those kills would have been armor breaks and probably deaths, or at least you know the second one would have been a death. The first one would have still been a badly hurt. Like if you only look at the first injury result, those would have been on better players if those rotters weren't in the way. So the rotters eating those is is absolutely doing their job. Um, yeah. helping out so uh, even though the chaos them. got it looks like the chaos got bad breaks but the injury rolls were incredible they got four chaos on seven breaks but seven breaks on 27 blocks when you're definitely making claw mighty blow blitzes you know every turn or so uh, screams uh, maybe a bit of maybe there was some foul appearance going on maybe there was just some bad blocking dice maybe he wasn't in a position to do claw mighty blow blitzes every turn but, uh, something else that the nerve Nurgle just really suffocated the chaos, it looks like. Yeah, something else that we haven't really mentioned when talking about this team before is, you know, he has the two really good warriors, and that's pretty much all this team has. The if to In order to win, you have to rely on those warriors, but that also means that they're the ones getting all the SPP because they have to do the... They get all the Kaz. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the tall team problem. Yeah. Blizzard's at the 
Yeah. Blizzards are the exact same way, though, just with like less accelerated growth, right? Like yeah. you have a couple of Blizzards who do everything. And so you're rookie source, stay rookie source forever. It's happening to me a little bit now, but like it's it's ultra, you know, it, it's happening to an extreme degree with two Chaos Warriors that do everything on this team, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, especially since this one ate the MVP. I really love that to go elsewhere, but, you know, it's it's what it's all you can do really so you know you take it um then we had locust kosekin and slade the black mage utter drubbing it looks like chaos getting 27 blocks to only 18 for the chorps Ooh. uh 13 breaks for the chaos resulting in seven removals this uh Chorps sustained nine removals including a a dead bull centaur effectively an mng on the devil the best chorp blocker in the league yep. in my opinion and a dead uh, guard hobgoblin, which, you know, it's a hobgoblin, but yeah. it's guard, so that kind of sucks. Um, Hobgoblin's a bit sad. The Emperor Reverse going down is annoying because he's finally he finally had some relevant skills. I think this should probably be break tackle, but, uh, yeah. Well, he's dead now. Not a good game for Slade. Not a good game for no, at not all. at all. We did predict Slade, but like the the fact that Slade got um, eighteen blocks and the All Stars of Chaos got twenty seven, ex- like screams to me. All Stars of Chaos were on offense first, and just like Kaz, 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 like very, very early on Slade, and you could do kind of yeah. Just, they ran out of players to hit. Uh, yeah. Good news for Locust though; he leveled a rookie warrior, his vampire beastman, and a rookie goat. So. This team has needed a bit of help for a long time. It was a really um, good game for him. It's starting to really come together. It's got a a ball carrier with plus movement. It's got a plus strength blitzer. It's got a full complement of block warriors, probably. It's got Pitbull Baby Breath is going to be something. I don't know. what. Uh, I, I mean, you'd love a double for dodge. Oh, I wonder what you do with him. Because you, you could, you I could just I give him... Block. I, I might... Uh, might give him guard or something like that. You could just give him sure hands and transition him to being the ball carrier because a strength four agi four ball carrier is a nightmare. However, you already have one, so that's kind of a waste. It feels like a waste, and also, um, like beast beastmen are like the only time you care about strength on your beast. Well, I mean, I guess sometimes when you're being blocked, but mostly you care about it for like blitzing yourself free. And like if your if your ball's yeah. being hit, <clears throat> having plus strength is nice, but things have already gone wrong, you know. Like this beast is it happens more than you think. Off. It does. No, I know. Like it's not irrelevant to have a strength four ball carrier. I'm not gonna like try to make that argument, but I don't think it's as meaningful as often as it is like to have a strength four roadblock. But then the agi is a little awkward. I don't know. I honestly, you don't. could also uh, you could if if that block was wrestle, he would have been a pretty amazing sacker too. But you could yeah, I think I would. I think I would have taken wrestle, which is why I. I and mean, I've said that before. But, you could uh, go that way. You could still plan on going that way. Like if that's if that's a double, just take dodge. If it's not a double, you could go tackle um, or two heads. Probably just tackle first and use them as like the you know very reliable blitzer as like a safety. Already three tackle and there is a Russell tackle beastman. I, I honestly know. would just take guard probably. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's kind of a weird choice. I wish I really wish that block was wrestle. Um, but yeah, I think guard is probably the best choice. You can start do- you can dodge guard into useful places or, or keep him not tied up. Um, I just like harder to tie it up. He's just like he's just like going to be a kind of an all around support piece, is what I was thinking. But I don't know. Uh, and Slay so Slay so got a level on a blocker where that's going to be we pray for Claw, and if it's not Claw, I I don't know. You take some other piling on, piling on or like Juggernaut maybe. Dauntless Juggernaut something. Like uh, but that's that's an unfortunate game for Slade, and his next game is going to be a little rough. Um, but really good for Locus. Uh, then we have Bring Out Your Undead from Rand versus CR Boys. The CR Boys and Nashville Nasty. Uh, I took Bring Out Your Undead, and I think you took CR Boys, and they tied. So I guess there was a good reason why we uh, picked the way we did. Yeah. Very punchy game. 54 for the um, the Kemri, 48 for the Necro. Though some of that is Frenzy. Both Blitz Raws uh, were removed. That could that have, have been bad. bad. If, those, if those weren't badly hurts... You would have such a hard time in your next game down two Blitz Raws. Wow. I mean, yeah, you're just done. Um, I mean, Camry, it turns out, lean really hard on their uh, on their positionals. Um, more so even than most. There were uh, seven Kaz in total because Sierra Boys was just fouling the shit out of the Camry, it looks like. So there was, there was three Kaz inflicted by Sierra Boys and then two from fouls or failed dodges. But it looks like, other than the two on the Blitz Raw, nothing stuck. So Regen was a real skill this game. And on the other side, the um, 
the necro sustained two kaz and both got back, uh, hack, so. hack and slash was uh, induced so they could have also just been chainsaw hits or chainsaw yeah, fouls still still, still fouls, well not if but... it's like the blitz chainsaw action or the oh chainsaw right does action. that count as it would still be an injury but it's not from a block so no, so it doesn't count that's fair it's not a blocking action it's a, it's in place of a blocking action uh, um okay yeah so uh looks like a decent game on both sides um the skeleton level is unfortunate. He really doesn't need more skeleton SVP. The MVP going to a skeleton as well is kind of annoying considering there are, you know, Especially ten, skeleton. ten One, good two, targets. Level again. It's funny. Um, and on the other side, Mackie picks up two Kaz and a completed, or any touchdown to bring him even farther into Legend, which doesn't matter, of course. Uh, I wonder if Dauntless did stuff this game because he did get two, uh, two Kaz. Two Kaz, and he also like you know had some good targets for Dauntless certainly in these blockless two. It's it's a good uh, good candidate for Dauntless certainly, and you know it, it works twice right. You get to reroll you reroll Dauntless for the um the, fr- the second hit for Frenzy as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's that ended up one one. So because of that, we can take a look at the standings. I'll try to keep one hidden just to avoid spoilers for people who really care. Uh, and we can see because of Ursa's win there, he is now. Uh, on top of the leaderboard, he's a full win ahead of Kaelrick right now with 19 points versus Kaelrick's 16. So uh, that's that's pretty good. 6-1-1. He's got a little bit of a cushion. Uh, even if he loses a week and Kaelrick wins, he's he's tied at worst. So it's nice to have that cushion available. Kaelrick in second, but that's pretty easily upset by Uber or Locus being one point behind him. Uh, Fall, Atomics, and Slade are also within one win of that uh, that jumping ahead of that 16. Um, so second through seventh are all still pretty in contention, but uh, Urs is feeling pretty good with his uh, his spot in the playoffs right now. Um, then Rand, Sol, Schutenheim um, are at 10, Yeo at 7, then uh, I shoot blanks, 6, 4 for Legion, and 2 for CR Boys. Uh, those bottom, bottom four are probably uh, considering about just thinking about next season now rather than the uh, remains of this season. Uh, challengers is probably in range for the 10 uh, the 10 point people but relies on other people losing at this point you want to poke super base and see if he can get us that file while we set up predictions i will um ask about status uh one moment i don't want like my uh, it's a screen capture on discord so when i change windows it's going to go all screwy so i'm just going to i'm going to just switch scenes for a second so that it doesn't uh I'll just ask uh, if there's any idea on how close he is. Um, and then we'll go back here. Um, so then we need to do uh, predictions for week nine. Um, we d- yeah, we d- first up is Atomics versus Marvelous Creatures, so Soul. Uh, we did do this a little bit ahead of time in case some games got played before we got around to doing the recap. So I've got some, yep. uh, some values in there. Uh, my initial uh, guess here, I think I took Atomics as my first choice just because there's so much missing from the Marvelous Creatures this week. Yes, I don't think I saw that. Uh, so there, is, there are two, there are three blitzers, including the Agi Five one, um, and there are two witches. Uh, but there are two niggles kicking around, one on the witch elf, one on the blitzer. So those are incredibly juicy targets. There's no bench, but he does get three hundred k. Yep. Or so. Uh, no. Two hundred and eighty. Uh, Three hundred and seventy. Um, seventy. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so he has a wizard, which oh. is a big deal. Um, but if he gets a wizard, then he probably doesn't really have much of a bench. And, uh, you know, there's a, a decent amount of tackle on Atomics' team. Um, he is missing Sand Dune, uh, but there's still two Claw Mighty Blow, which is surprisingly annoying for elves. And uh, Ornin and Bird are both really good uh, to deal with these elves as well. Um, it's I think it's pretty close, frankly, because the players that are missing are not the ones that are critical for this matchup for Marvelous Creatures. Um, yeah, I think it also is pretty close. But if he had all those players, I would just call this for the Dark Elves. But given that it's uh, a couple players missing, I think it's a lot closer. So um, I I took the Nurgle just because I have you know I think the Claw is going to be annoying and then Bird and I also to apparently do took the Nurgle, so I will not change that. Okay, then we had um, then we have Yield Guard um, versus the Lackland Long Tongues. Um, well, if uh, if table standings say anything, we'd want to go with the Lizards here. Um, just because they are, they're doing pretty well. They're at the top so far. They want to maintain that. Um, he has both skinks, which is 
the movement nine skink and the uh, like agi skink are really what matters here i mean you know saurus hate nurgle um but those skinks like nurgle really hate that much speed they do uh, and the lizards are going to have a wizard yes I think I think I had called this for Yayo, but I'm gonna go back and see. I will say though, if he loses, it's gonna be because this um, frenzy mighty blow claw piece just tears people apart. Because uh, yeah, the frenzy is really nice on Source because you just can do that really well when you can use it safely because it gives you like just a lot more reliability and knocking them down. And even if you're just getting stuns, that's like it's such a huge loss for lizards if they like have a stun sword. Yeah, and the the horns means all you need is one assist, and both blocks are two dice. Uh, if you have to do the frenzy, um, I can see this going either way, but I see it going the lizards' way a little bit. Uh, Especially, well, only because of the wizard. I, yeah, I see it. I, I can easily see it going either way. Um, but I, I agree with you on the the wizard half, and uh, I think the other thing it's a little bit like sort of meta gamey, but. I feel that like at this point, Yayo cares more about development than winning because he's near the bottom, and Lachlan Long Tongues uh, care more about winning, so they're more likely to go kind of all out for that. Uh, so you know that plus the wizard tilts it a little bit in favor for the lizards for me, but I think it's not it, in a normal day it would be pretty pretty even. Like the claw can do really scary things to lizards. And then we have Shooty versus Slade, which I would call automatically for Slade, except Slade is down the devil. Yeah. So we just still have a Claw Mighty Blow, and the, but only and the one. Bull Centaur as well. No piling on. Uh, he's got a fresh one, so that's fine. Uh, just as a, as a quick update, Super Base is kind of stuck at work, so we're not going to be able to watch that game. We'll watch something else. We will instead watch our third option, which was Unseen Walker versus... B-Dog. Because uh, it's relatively important as well. It's from Div 1. Uh, which we watched two last week, and it's also a match from B-Dog, who we haven't really watched before. Uh, yeah, the devil, back to this. The devil being down is annoying, because that leaves him with only one Claw Mighty Blow. Um, two, three, four, he has five. He still has seven guard. I initially called this for Shooty, because I just thought that there was going to be so much, like, the, the strength and guard of the orcs was going to be annoying enough for the Chorfs to deal with while missing their best Chorf. But there's more guard on the Chorps than I thought there was. I mean, there's still more, as much guard on Shooty's team. Like, this could very easily be a bad game for the Chorps, but I think that Slade can probably pull this out still. Oh, I'll take, I'm going to take the Orcs. I'll remain that. I'll, I'll keep that with the Orcs for now, then. Uh, I feel like right. I've uh, not done Shooty justice, not having predicted for him very much. Shooty justice. Uh, in Calric versus the Necro, I called it for Calric. Uh, I did um, as well, yeah. I think CR boys are having a rough season, they are. and uh, the Battle Brothers are in a in a good spot to uh, take advantage of that. They're only down Witch Hunter, so they have most of their full team. They've got a nice bench. Sure, the wiz the Necro continue to get inducements, but I think that the Brets will do well here. I don't think it's like a it's only a, a total loss. Like there is a there's a lot of really good positionals that could make this really annoying for the Brets, but on the whole, Fend cancels. Frenzy, so that's really nice against the wolves. That there's only one wolf, admittedly. Yeah, and, that's uh, what I was going to bring up. Are just going to be pretty annoying, especially Stam Firm is somewhat canceled by Wrestle, so all the Wrestle line or all the Wrestle blockers can, you know, remove annoying flesh golems more than other teams. Could yeah, the um, there's, the fact that there's only one werewolf is a pretty big deal. Like normally, it's not terrible because you like induce Cheney, but you can't induce Cheney and a wizard here because you only get two twenty. So you don't get both options. Um, so if you're doing, if if you either have to have the uh, ball carrier be a white, which means you're like losing guard, has to be a rookie ghoul, which means you don't have sure hands or block, um, or it has to be on the werewolf, which means you don't have the werewolf for blitzing. So you have to make a bad choice uh, for in terms of the ball where the ball goes. Um, so I think that's and you can't really fix that. So I think that's going to be pretty awkward for for Sierra boys when trying to deal with the blitzers of uh, of Kilrick. So I'm, I took Kilrick as well. Um, then we have Rand with Bring Out Your Undead versus Here We Fall from Fall. Um, apparently in the sheet I put down Bring Out Your Undead, and I don't remember why I picked that. Um, 
not that that's like a terrible thing to pick it's just i don't remember what my reasoning was like that wasn't me trying to be like sarcastic that was like i didn't remember why i did it hello unseen walker um so the the he's got the throw raw which is really helpful and both of those blitz raws are still available that's a mighty blow tackle piling on a mighty blow piling on there's two mighty blows from the tomb guardians there's two guard from the tomb guardians two of the skeletons even have wrestle tackle which is pretty annoying versus the elves the elves do get um 130 right which is uh no that's not right 100 and something else 60 170 uh oh and uh Rand is at 240k that goes down to right yeah so the right that so the elves don't get much in terms of inducements which means they're going to be at 11 players um so the I wonder if that's a double cash bug because 240k shouldn't be possible right you can't get 90k in a game uh six plus fan factor if you roll the six plus you only get plus one for fan factor and plus one for winning the game could have had more starting last season or starting like could have kept some starting the game with more than 150k but i'm gonna escalate that to check um well so what, what there's a lot of mighty blow there's a good a lot of tackle as well to deal with the uh the dodge and the elves um aren't gonna have a bench assuming the money and inducements and stuff are right uh which means i feel like the attrition game is gonna make things hard for the elves here there is the movement nine catcher, which is the scariest thing I think the Kimri have to deal with. Um, but they do have the movement eight throw raw that can at least be kind of safety like that way. Um, so I don't know. Kind of, but I'm going to call this one ball. And by call, gonna do, gonna, I mean, I did. I called it for Rand and I'm, I'll keep it that way. Uh, Locus and Uber. So this is, uh, this is a big one as well. Um, I, I initially called this for the rats, but then I, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that the rats had lost their best gutter runner. Um, I initially called it for the rats as well. Um, I think that's probably still true, given that the rats get a lot of inducements and they still have the more important pieces against chaos, being he the so uh, because he hasn't even taken his levels yet. No, uh, and he gets the he has the more important pieces in the um, the strip ball player. Uh, of it he took the block on the warrior and he took a dirty player on whom lock maybe i think it was or no it's brick so he's still got two pending levels on brick and on pitbull, uh, baby, breath. pitbull baby breath so he's still got at least 40k on top of that so 2150 so we're looking at like a 600k ish inducement yeah game. like 580 or whatever I like that. Oh, that's it's the rats with a ton of inducements while they still have the one turner the claw palm guy and the like wrestle strip ball tackle dauntless dude the strip ball is pretty irrelevant if the ball's in the hands of the the ball carrier but it's not always going to be especially with inducements like we could wizard it or whatever and if it ends up somewhere else the strip ball can do some serious work there so i think it's going to be hard for the chaos uh unless things go real well for them uh real quick and then we have I shoot blanks versus our name is Legion, uh, 1460 chaos and 1850, um, necro. Um, I'm going, I took the, uh, I took the necro initially for this. Um, I just, the speed is going to be annoying to deal with. There's one, two, three, four, five guard versus none on the chaos or three on the chaos team. Um, but it's all on the warriors. Uh, yeah, I think this is probably going to be a necro game. Like kill, it's hard to go for hard attrition versus necro regen, so yeah. because they regen they're like one of the best uh attrition teams in the in the game and they have a bench of two yeah. units, so. regen cheap linos um enough you get 400k in inducements but chaos inducements are pretty mad um yeah i mean i would consider there's a couple options there but it's the if it was like i would rather be 400k down against like another bash team than 400k down against a team like necro um, cause with something like, um, Lord Borak or Grashnak, you can have like relatively reliable strength to sort of help you, uh, against the other bashes when you're down guard or whatever. But when you're down a bunch of TV and they outspeed you with those werewolves, it can be super annoying to try to, to deal with them. Even if they you lightning bolt them, if they're out of range, it's not like you can do anything about it. Um, so I, I took the, uh, the Necro there. Um, it's possible if the, uh, inducements are used well, but it's you know it's an uphill block of games you know it works but not all yeah. the time um okay so um 
is that th that is prediction. So do we want to uh, watch the game then um, next? Yeah, let's hop into the... Oh, enjoy my Steam oh, library. Steam. You're welcome. It's expansive. Not particularly. Ben's flexing on us with his rich boy daddy gamer times. It's, good. it's asking me about Death Zone. What do I do? I want to play Death Zone. Do you? Let's just cancel this stream. And play Death Zone instead. I wish Blood Bowl would load. That would be cool. Come on. Mine is also doing the same thing. Oh, no, there it is. There we are. It does launch, I think, slower than any other game I have. You know, Blood Bowl is not particularly well optimized. Yeah, and Discord stopped working while it was launching. Oh, Blood Bowl. The game we all love to hate. Well, oops, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to go here. Actually, allow me to, uh, I'm going to put up the title screen for a sec, just so we don't, uh, we don't spoil nothing. I'm sure most people are aware of results, considering they pay attention to their own division, but just in case, let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, we were planning on watching, um, Superbase for a couple reasons, but, uh, we, you know, the replay isn't available anymore and he's stuck at work, so he can't send it to us. Um, so we're watching another one that is relevant for, um, you know, standings, as well as uh, from a player that we haven't actually watched before, which I'm kind of excited about. So we're going to watch uh, Ragedorf and uh, the Bug Bombers from B-Dog and Unseen Walker. I know that Unseen Walker streams his games, so if you want to watch his perspective from that, feel free to go watch that. Or if you've already seen it, um, you already know the result. But... No, hopefully it's still interesting to hear our commentary versus his, and this way I get to see uh, the Bogue Bombers play, who I haven't really seen before. Um, okay, I am at the coin flip. Oh, I'm still getting into it, sorry. Well, I will pause at setup and wait for you. Ready to go. We are in uh, the Bogue Bomber Stadium. They have the Squidge, Squig Sandwich kiosk i don't think we watched either of these coaches though so that's good uh i don't know if there are inducements i don't think they've shown up yet because i have it paused but we'll see that once we start uh if i recall correctly the humans are like missing a blitzer for this one or is that the other game no they have other blitzers for this game no it was when they were playing the vampires that they had no team. Ragedorf has uh, both the runners available, uh, both blitzers, but only the one troll slayer, I think. In Furious Dwarf, the best dwarf. Armor 7 troll slayer. There is more armor 7 on this dwarf team than should reasonably be there. That yeah, really throws away most of the advantages that. Uh... They have so many skills, though. Right. Look at. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Uh, B Dog has the fame, but no uh, inducements there. Um, both just have the uh, the straight up apo. Nine versus eight on the same plus eight. Oh. Oh, I'm ready for paper dwarves. I mean, they're made of paper. Look, armor eight, armor seven. Look at this. Look at Altdorf. What a good boy. The bandaged the bandaged head model is certainly very appropriate for the Agi One AV Seven dwarf. <laughs> Is he also niggled? He's also niggled. Yeah, he's fucked. Um, so the Bogue Bombers chose to receive, going on offense first, hoping to outbash the dwarves, which normally I would find to be a questionable decision, but in this case it makes a lot of sense. The dwarves have no bench and a bunch of AV7 pieces, so, you know. Al also, it's if you're worried about the Mighty Blow Only from... one of those six books, so just punch all dwarf to death on turn one and you win the game. If you're, uh, if you're worried about the dwarves and their mighty blow um, in return, you might also want to take it just to attempt to limit attrition a bit. Um, uh, I mean, like, generally speaking, if you're worried about getting outbashed by the other team, you want to defend first because you'll be defending with full strength. And you need full strength to defend. Is usually the argument. There. But there's also an argument for, I need full strength to score against this dwarf team, and I'd like to score. If you're in that position and you feel like you're about to be outbashed, you're probably going to lose. Oh, well, that's a good start. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. 
you're ahead of me. Okay. A lot of ahead I'll, of me, I'll pause. Let me know when the exciting thing happens. I'm guessing this guy dies. Yep. <laughs> Block one of the game. Right. Dead. The exciting thing has happened. Block one of the game is a uh, a dead dwarf. He is just a rookie, but still, that is not a good sign for how this game is coming here. That is a terrible start, yeah. Makes a 1 in 27 block. A bit risky, but the ball's pretty safe, I guess. Yeah. AB9 again breaking. So two breaks on AB9 on the line. Both mighty blow, but still. Well, time for the third one. Double. Oh, wait, no. The first one was a non mighty blow hit, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, just a rando block from a blitzer, rookie blitzer. Ooh, dub skull, though. That's nice. Gets the knockdown on the return hit. Could consider following up for piling on, but. Yeah, it's risky, especially with no reroll. It's it's risky, and it also kind of leaves that guy exposed. Like even if he doesn't get fouled, he is now gonna have to spend his yeah. next two turns getting back to everyone else, and he's just gonna get punched while he does that. Yeah, I don't I don't think he would. Yeah, I don't think he would get fouled, but I think he would get swarmed. Yeah, exactly. Thrower has got the ball, and he's in kind of a, a little bit of a cage. We are gonna throw a foul onto uh, Osha Dorf, though. Oh. Yeah. He is AV8. He's good. AV8 is too strong, so two breaks, um, one dead rookie lino, one stun on rookie lino. So not not a great start, but not the worst thing in the world. Both on uh, both on armor nine. Arm Furious dwarf with a pow yep. on this. We get a removal in return for the uh, for the dwarves. Mighty blow doing the thing there. Uh, that was a an eleven into an eight. Uh, the niggle so. helps too. Middle and the niggle and the mighty blow. Dangerous piece to leave exposed, certainly. This uh, niggled guard piece. Not a lot of movement from the dwarves. They just kind of stay back. I. Is there a train going by? Like, why is there a bell ringing in the background? There's some stage. I don't know. There's no train tracks, so I don't know what that is. Ding, no. ding, ding, ding. No, I think. Steam train arriving no. in the year 1748. <laughs> I honestly don't know. So Furious Dwarf goes down in return. He is AV7, so this break is not the most surprising with Mighty Blow. And he might get piled on. Ooh, Mighty Blow not used on the armor. He does get piled on, but no result. No result indeed. Um, yeah, the dwarf staying back, like, they don't want to get too engaged because there's a lot of movement for the humans, as we've seen with those catchers. Like, there's a movement 9 one still available. So if the dwarfs get too stuck, the movement 9 can just run around and then be like, cool, I'm over here, I'm going to score now. Ooh, rando break on an armor eight piece, which is nice. That was a non mighty blow hit. Oh, that was number eight. Yeah, I said whatever. We're good. Multiple stuns on the dwarves though is uh, is fairly annoying because those uh, the strength or wrestle piece doing some work here. Those dwarves on the floor are pretty much out of the game for a while, which is really annoying. Yeah. So the bonehead is is unfortunate because it does leave your mean Joe Bean guy exposed, which I would consider taking a hit on him. He does have a Mighty Blow Tackle Blitzer available in Master Dwarf, and I would probably... I don't know, he decides to go for... A Double Skull. Rolls it to high, and then into a Dub Skull, and then a push. Going after Arm and Hammer. I think I might have targeted the Blitzer over here, but it also would have given you a nice opportunity to tie up the uh, Ogre, but he is just punching a hole through with the goal of... He's putting pressure on the ball. Um, just putting pressure on the ball, it yeah. makes sense because now the the humans can't really afford to sit back there and not do anything they need to either bring players back and deal with that guy or they need to like go it's forward very amusing because the dwarves are playing like humans and the humans are playing like dwarves. yeah it's kind of weird like the the humans are the ones engaging in the oh man third dub skull of the game uh, we're churning through rerolls like they're free stupid dub skulls yeah, humans willingly engaging in a bash fest with dwarves is not something you see every day. This is basically like going to work until the turn that the humans don't knock down any dwarves, and then the dwarves are going to beat the ever-living hell. Or don't break armor to uh, stop the dwarves from so standing. So far, they're up. doing well. Mighty blow on armor eight, getting it done on Grandmaster Oof. Dwarf. Oh no, that was armor nine. Yeah, the armor eight has been totally fine so far. The armor nine has died and been injured. Yeah, that's true. We're going to get a really good foul on Master Dwarf here, though. Oh no, we're not gonna take it. Oh no, there's no way that you should have taken that. That's such a good would, foul. Yeah, that's that's a worthwhile foul, I think. Like if you get sent off, it sucks because you're not tying up these players anymore. But 
that was a two assist foul with dirty player on armor eight on one of his best support pieces when you've already used the apo i think that was the turn to push for uh greed would have been a pretty big advantage so if you got that free, you're giving away a free muddy blow hit on your dp lino anyway so the odds of him oh that's a red die it's a bold red that's a bold red die did you know that was a red die on scene locker uh considering he typed i messed it, up this I turn i feel like the red. answer is no yeah, that was a... Well, what are rerolls for? So yeah, the humans uh, choosing to switch sides here, which makes a lot of sense. Mighty Blow hit on the runner. Unseen Walker keeping his uh, his right? agi uh, plus movement dwarf still in the back, though, can pretty easily respond to a side switch. But man, these dwarves are going down way faster than you'd expect. Yeah, they're not... Well, they're taking a lot of blocks. The humans are having nice block dice, which is making up for the fact that they are in a scrum with a team that is better at being in a scrum. And also, Unseen Walker's team is just more fragile than most the, people. The, the ones that are fragile haven't been the ones that have been hurt, though. Like, all the armor breaks have come on the armor 9 players. I know, but... Well, not all of them, but some of them. Like... Uh, when Furious Dwarf broke, that was that was an armor 7 piece break. El Senor Dwarf and uh, Grandmaster Dwarf, both armor 9. No, that's true. There have been some, some lucky breaks. There's not a ton of stand firm as well. There's only one stand firm piece on the pitch right now, and two, period. So one got ca one got cast. Stand firm is one of the ways... Well, actually, I guess Furious Dwarf also has stand firm, but you don't really want him aggro basing. But yeah, stand firm is one of the ways that dwarves can kind of like keep these kind of teams in check because on a on a bad turn where they don't get a bunch of cows, suddenly you get to hit back. Yeah, and with the amount of mighty blow that this team has going around, it really only needs a turn or two of smacking back. Yeah, there's so much. If this if Fury Storf, or I mean, if Unseen Walker ever gets a uh, like a good turn of hitting, it's ball. gonna go really well for him. Plus, the one die, the one die is a push. Does not elect to reroll. Oh, now you're ahead. Here comes the hit. And no reroll. Yeah, I mean, I think no reroll there makes sense given that you only have one and yeah. the odds of you getting a knockdown is a five plus. Yeah, I, if it was a two die, I would have rerolled it. One die, not worth it. We can push the runner into the ogre now um, for another hit on. Uh, if we failed. The pow, we could have pushed him into the ogre. Piling on is no good. No good. Runner's alive. So armor seven breaks, armor nine breaks, but armor eight is just right. Is what we're going. I think at. so. Dauntless works on alt door. The armor seven niggle piece going down to muddy blow. <laughs> Just to start Man, if you told me, I would not have believed you if you told me the the humans were going to play this bashy against dwarves. I would believe it against these dwarves. Yeah. Also, humans are all about bashing when they can get away with it, right? Oh, are we going to see a foul here? I think I also we accidentally called uh, Unseen Walker a dwarf, oh. and I, I think that's probably fine. So we get a couple mighty blow hits over here. Armor 8 has oh, been holding. Ace Jackson's dead. Attack. Oh, well, I shouldn't speak, apparently. T armor's holding. Dead. <laughs> I, do, I do. Oh, dead into dead. Nice. Well, dead into something dead equivalent. Um, I do like that when we uh, were watching that happen, we get the kill tattoo on his back shown prominently. My, my game also glitched out and did the thing where it made like a skull tower to infinity. From the dead symbol off his player card. Extra dead. Yeah, what a good dwarf. Look at him go. Three plus two plus is his way out. It was. It did have a reroll because the tackle guy had already gone down. So the humans now have to push through and score. But this is a pretty flimsy side, and the ogre can get very involved here. I'm surprised the ogre actually didn't tag up the runner as well. It doesn't mean a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it is still nice to have. I think we're going to see a hit on Hellsdorf yeah. because he is the real threat. Yeah. He goes down. Yeah. Mighty blow piling on. I wonder if we're going to see a piling on here. Yes. I mean, I can't imagine a world Mighty in which you don't pile that on. 
Oh yeah, Mighty Blow wasn't used on the armor, so it's a good piling on, but nope, no luck. Yeah, the humans can tie up these dwarves that are kind of in the middle, especially with the stun on that runner, and then just kind of YOLO their way up the right-hand side of this movement 9 guy, and the dwarves can't do anything about it now. Yep. Ooh, sure feet triggering. We go f Well, you don't need to go... I guess you needed that... Uh, you definitely didn't need that third one, all right? Uh, well, the third one stops him from being based by diving tackle. Uh, I mean, I guess it was a 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus, and you had a way to clear it off, but sure. Yeah. Fine. Fine, then. Like, I don't, I don't think it's wrong, but... Well, you had a reroll, I guess. Yeah, but... A lot of people wouldn't have done it, but uh, I think it's it's fine if you have the opportunity to, because now you are 100% safe and you can't be based by diving tackle. Um, but I would, right? If, if your only play was to do a 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus to base their ball carry with diving tackle, you roll that. Oh. Rolls a push, but the second one will let him do it regardless. And he dubs skulls. Jesus Perfect. Third or fourth dub skulls again? Fourth. I think fourth. Although not, I think it's been two two, right? Like two for each coach. Yeah. Uh, and the other reroll of unseen walker is going to a uh, rando, a rando red die that was an accident. See, look, the dodge, the dodge worked, right? He would have been able to base that up with uh, with diving tackle. Yeah, that is a weird apple. You're right on a wrestle catcher. I think that's a, a very strange rest, uh, apple choice. I mean, I think he was just pixel huggy. Like you know, he was. It's one of two catchers on the team, and uh, it's the one that he was trying to level, and it died. So he, I think he was just being pixel huggy, like trying to have a developed right. catcher. But I mean, the problem with that sort of pixel hugging is it leads to your actually good piece of stuff. I mean, I think I still think it's weird. I'm just saying that's what I think his reasoning for it was. Is he's just being pixel huggy. Yeah. Reroll on Altdorf, the Armor 7 Niggled piece, who is perfectly fine to Mighty Blow. Yeah, Armor 7 Niggle is immune to Mighty Blow. Armor 9 just dies. That's what we've seen so far. It's knocked down to Mighty Blow. Armor 8 holding quite well. Dwarves. There have been two Cavs, and they are both big Cavs, so. Yeah, Dwarves can't really do much about this in response now. They're just going to punch stuff and try to get an advantage for the next half. Yeah, so. This in the old uh, dwarf world is what we call a tie in the making. Yep. Or in any really like slow bash team. Like as a Nurgle coach, this is where I go. Well, I'm gonna try to kill as many things as I can because if I'm lucky and I get a bunch of removals, I might have a chance to score early and then turn over. But we're probably looking at a tie. Like it's all about just trying to make it easy for yourself next half now. That frenzy piece is one square away from being able to serve Hellsdorf. I hope Unseen Walker counted that. I also wonder. I've been in that exact situation before, Unseen Walker. I know how you feel. I've, as a neural coach, I have I have done this exact thing many times. Because the goal is, if I'm real lucky with removals, plus like my LOS hits in on turn nine, um, I can then make the decision if I want to, you know, three turn, four turn, and then try to turn over in three turns or whatever. Uh, and it's easier to do if they have no players. So you just try. Uh, we don't get the dwarf back, which is annoying, but uh, we will get another try. Unseen Walker now has uh, six LOS blocks to uh, try to get some uh, player advantage between this and the start of next half. Uh, oh yeah, I suppose uh, with movement seven, a one turn is actually not terribly unlikely for the... Uh, the dwarves, but they need another player to do that, right? That is the most critical shit I have ever heard you say. So movement six one turns are impossible without frenzy. No, they're not. And you're like movement seven makes it so much more likely. And they are. You can't do a movement six one turn with only. With yes, one. you can. You need all eleven players, and the other team has to set up with the three players together. Los, but you can do it with movement six. I think you still need a frenzy piece. You don't. Or something else. No, you can just do it straight up? Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. 
Uh, movement seven one turns are still incredibly up. the like the standard like dwarf one turn uses the frenzy because it makes it easier for positioning um but like if you're on a team that has more movement six okay, like like oh well there's a removal um on, on a team with more movements like six like on chaos or on nurgle where you have where your linemen aren't movement four and you can position them to get the pushes you can do it but on dwarves, I'd think you need the frenzy when they're movement six, just because there's only two movement six pieces. Because it's a, the the movement part is the like pushing players around uh, to block off the blocks part of it. Um, but you can do it. Trying to level a random dwarf on a on a vanity pass, but not gonna get there. No, Papa Dwarf does not get the ball. So a, a movement seven one turn with no reroll. Probably. is is feasible like it's not likely it's not likely to happen but he could have done it if he had one more player yeah i think people people overestimate how likely one turns are and i say that even knowing that i think a lot of people like are like oh, yeah, those are usually long shots but like i was playing against uh wood elves with a uh sprint sure feet edgy five leap catcher and a strength four war dancer and their one turn that they pulled off was still like a 20% one turn. Even though oh, the, the hardest parts are like you have to roll a whole bunch of two dies with only getting pushes. And you need a lot of them when you're doing a movement six or movement seven one turn. Like it's it's yeah. functionally impossible for movement six. But the difference between movement six and movement seven is really big. And the difference between movement seven and movement eight is really big. Just because the hardest part is the pushes. And every time you go up one movement, you need one less push. Exactly, yeah. So like... Of that one turn he threw, the worst part was like a four plus pass with a built in reroll, so 75%. And then he had to throw a two die where he needed a push and a three die where he needed a knockdown or a knockdown or a pusher bet. Yeah, I mean, it just and turns out you need a big string of dice. Not like not all, all the individual rolls are not necessarily difficult, but when you have to roll 20 dice, it's pretty likely that one of them is a one, right? Like, yeah. And and like, but even in all of that, because elves are so reliable, it is the blocking that is the hardest part. Even though he only needed a two die with a push and a three die with a knockdown. It right? almost always is the pushes that's the hardest part. Um, but that's a lot of discussion about dwarf one turns that probably didn't really need to occur. Well, because we were waiting for the the thing to tick over. In the meantime, the KO did not come back for the runner, so the runner is still out, and the humans are down three players. So the dwarves, uh, the dwarves do have one player advantage, right? Because now the team had advantage, if I recall correctly. Well, they just KO'd a human, so... Oh, there you go. So the dwarves are getting a player advantage, but uh, it's probably not enough and not on the right players to make this like a pretty, like like an easier 2-1 victory. It's looking very much like 1-1 right now. Um, but that could change. Like if the next if the next turn, maybe the next two turns, go really well for Rage Dwarf, you can consider trying to score early and turn over. But I mean, I think I, I think you would try to score early, no matter what. Uh, I don't know. Ooh, snakes the GFI though. And Furious Dwarf goes down to box cars after that. That's funny. I love snakes into box cars. Oh my god! Wow. It's, it's so iconic. I, I don't know. Like, I would rather have like a guaranteed tie than a small chance at winning, but a medium chance at losing. Like, if that's. I mean, does a tie do anything for Unseen Walker at this point? I guess it depends on your table. Like, just in general, I guess it depends on your your uh, your table standings. Um, it's the Nurgle coach in you. It is. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, man. Yeah, so I miss a lot of shots. Also, that's not true. You don't take 100% of the shots you don't take. They're not misses. Missing requires you to take the shot. That's what missing means. I've missed your pedantry. It's like if you're taking... Ugh, if you're like doing percentages or something, you don't include the things that didn't happen. It makes you like viscerally angry. It does. And I would consider handing off to this blitzer and running the ball down. Well, I guess you can't do it super safely, but I would have considered it. Uh, well, I mean, given that Hellsdorf is movement seven and the blitzer is movement five, like over the two turns, it's going to take him to get to the end zone anyway. Like it's it's it, almost not it's that much faster <laughs> to give it to the blitzer. Unless you were going to ultra potato this turn, and that's probably not a good idea. Here. 
punching a blitzer in return. Juggernaut doing a thing. Master Dwarf going down on an armor eight brick. Hey, we broke armor eight. Weird. I wonder if we're gonna foul Furious Dwarf. I don't think so. We have to dodge, but maybe. Depends on how the humans really, really want to win this. They really, really don't want to tie because they are competing for Playoffs. table performance. Yeah, they're in the big, uh, like, there's a big group of players that are all pretty close to each other. Player takes down Paul the Dwarf, which is very nice. And then we can come in here. Oh, no, we've already blitzed. Yeah. So we can't do it. But we do have the uh, the movement catcher back there as, like, a bit of a safety. Not a great safety because he's strength two, but it's something. And it's, it's more likely it's, like, an assist or a, an anti-assist for, like, the blitzer to do the work. Thrower going down is fine, though. That was two blocks, because he had fend. Oh. But was it set to me? Uh, that's, a good, that's a good question. Practical Snow is along for the uh, the reviews. Welcome along. Armor 7, Armor seven Nagel play, player holding down three, three pieces, including a strength four line. What a world. I think, what a hero. Yeah. And he's just gonna blitz him. Speaking of uh, heroes that are extremely in trouble, uh, this Lino. He's fine. For now. It's still fine. No, no tackle pieces in range to hit this unless they do a GFI. So this is a well. He could knock, he could knock um, the Lino off with all four. You know, normally I'd be pretty happy about taking the ogre out of the game with one uh, longbeard, but you kind of need every every tool you have available, especially when that's one of the uh, guard nice. diving oh, tackle ones. Not enough to take him down. Altdorf taking a wrestle, but it does get him out of the way so he can go after this catcher. He didn't need this assist for... Oh, he's going with the three? No, he just gave an assist he didn't need. Uh, is it to counteract the sidestep? No, it is not. I'm not sure what it is. Because he can still sidestep onto the ball. Gets a pal, though, so... Oh, uh, you're, you're ahead. <clears throat> I was just wondering if, if you're going to run the uh, the runner a lot further forward this turn. To blocking that square means he can't sidestep into a place where you'd have to dodge with the ball carrier if you're running down the side. Uh, if he blitzed from the other corner, obviously. Like, you could have blitzed from here, and then he can't sidestep into a, into a really annoying place, but... Here is Dwarf with the one die knockdown. Not gonna pile on though. More removals for the dwarves, but it's um it's pretty late at this point, right? Like at best we're scoring next turn, which is three turns, which is enough for humans, hard for dwarves. Especially Yeah, I mean there is they are taking the humans are taking a lot of hits now, but they are getting only cast at this stage, so the armor has taken or the injury dice have taken a turn for the worst though. Yeah, but it like it might have been too it's it's almost too late. Like if this turn had come two turns ago. Yeah, like the humans uh, probably can't prevent the score here, given that this drive is very over. But, uh, oh, interesting choice to pile on there. I might have kept him free, because the dwarves can't really score next turn. They can't, right? This is out of scoring range. Oh, Oshadorf gets KO'd. Uh, one, two, th I can't count because it keeps animating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think he's at a range. No, he's in range because he's moving seven, so he can score two GFIs. A double GFI to score this turn, which I would strongly consider if you want to win the game. And given the amount of damage you've caused, the humans really, the humans would... really want that though. Well, yes, because the humans also really want to win. Uh, do the humans still have their catcher, one of the good catchers, available, or are they all dead now? Let's see. Walker goes for the score. He does, and he gets it. Yep. So he's aiming for the win. Um, if the human, I'd be a lot more scared of this uh, as Unseen Walker if the humans had their catcher, but both of them are now injured. So the like the the crazy YOLO two turn with catchers and the heat from the thrower is kind of out of range now. Yeah, Ko's not coming back for the dwarves though, so it's going to be nine on some. Uh, humans get their Ko back. So yeah, nine on eight, favoring the dwarves, but only 
only slightly, as you said. Yeah, so it's going to be really hard for the dwarves to turn this over into a win, but it's also going to be not that hard for them to stop the humans from scoring. So uh, it's going to be... Uh... With even numbers, I would expect a human two turn to be decent. They've still got the movement seven pieces. Um, couple of them. Yeah, like this... I think they have to set up very aggressively for a, a two turn. And that's what it looks like from my perspective. Yeah, if those two KOs had come back, I would have, especially since one of them is the wrestle strip ball uh, tackle player, that would have been really useful for uh, pressuring if you're trying to turn over the humans really fast. Um, if those two KOs had come back, I would have liked the dwarfs, but without those KOs back, it's going to be real hard for them to win this. Hey, hey, nice kickoff return, idiot, when the square, it lands on the square you were standing in. Um, uh, B, riddle me this. Nice random injury. You're there. way ahead. Um, it is you are way ahead. ahead. Here is the kickoff return. Oh, sorry. Did I skip some things? Maybe. Probably. The rock was cancelled. Um, why, why would you set up on the side that contains a diving tackle player when you're trying to do Um, I guess it doesn't contain the furious score, but... Yeah. Another double skill. I mean, I guess you can probably... Uh, it doesn't contain Furious Dwarf, who is um, Juggernaut and Frenzy, which means you can relatively easily push the stand firm scoring threat out of scoring range. But the diving tackle is the annoying bit, and if you just mark up the diving tackle with the ogre, the diving tackle now has to make a four plus dodge to get anywhere. So like it's, I think Fury, I think the the Troll Slayer is more scary. Now, oh, I would have put this the stand firm guy in scoring range first because he has no rerolls for this block. Yeah, I would, you, should, you need to move him first because you just go for the two turn here. If you get it, you win. Um, and if you don't get it, you still have a chance to recover. If you let the dwarves like get up in your face, you're just gonna get punched and not win. Yeah, um, interesting. I would have probably. I don't know about this dirty player. I think the dirty player should be screening off the scoring threads. I know there is technically a hit on the ball then, but I don't know if Fear, if Unseen Walker really had the players to pull it off. Uh oh. No troll slayer. That's what re rolls it for? Hey, he doesn't snake this one. Not yet. Okay, makes the dodge and then goes on the stand for a piece. He, gets the double pass. He doesn't have Juggernaut, so we're not surfing him, but we injured him anyway, so. Okay. There you go. That worked. Just Gonna be a tough score. We need to knock down Waldorf with the Ogre and then punch Furious Dwarf out of the way. We can do this. Uh, he has stand for him though, so this is going to be. Oh, you have you have juggernaut, yeah. So you blitz your way through the uh, through the troll slayer, and then you eat the ball to him. That's not going to do it. Oh wait, it is juggernaut. I literally just talked about juggernaut. Yeah, but now you have to do a crazy. Oh, he's not going to try to score this. Uh, if he got the knockdown, I think he would have. I would have considered. Um with the wrestle piece, blitzing Furious Dwarf with the wrestle piece, and then just doing the 4 plus handoff and running it in. I think that was the best odds, and I think this is going to get you bogged down and see you lose the game. Like a 4 plus handoff with a reroll into a like 3 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus to score or whatever it was from, I think he was on the 10 line. Like there's no way you, you beat the dwarves at this point. Like they're just gonna yeah. do this. <clears throat> yeah, this right? is exactly why. Uh... I think you go for the two turn just because as soon as you fail the two turn, you just lose all your chances. Instant fail dodge. Well. Doesn't fail it the second time though. Fails the GFI. So that's GG. Uh, I think B Dog had a good chance here and muddled up a little. Well, he also had like some really lucky Kaz early on, which you know helped a lot at the start. And the, the two KOs not coming back for uh, the dwarves is pretty bad, but I think I think you're probably that's a fair assessment. I think the dwarves got really good cast dice after that initial debacle. That's true, yeah. Uh, of the first half. Like they've been removing, and by removing, I mean casting humans on the reg. Um, so I don't think Unseen Walker is too upset about his his removal dice this game. But yeah, the uh, I think the humans had a chance to flex their movement and get that two turn in there and. They maybe 
mocked a bit at a four plus three plus two plus two plus or whatever it was but i think that was your best shot at winning yeah because if you fail the two turn we see exactly what happens dwarves get the opportunity to bring all their players into into range sure you have almost as many players if not more players and you have slightly fewer players um but it's real hard to break through a wall of dwarf when you only have one turn to do it in yeah exactly vanity pass and K or MVP on the dead catcher. Oof. What a world. What a level up. Big oof. MVP on Osha Dwarf doesn't level him. Not terrible. He does want level he wants stand firm, obviously, but um he's also armor broken, so who knows? Alright, shall we get out of Blood Bowl client and back into Rebel? Uh, we line? shall. Allow me to uh Oops, uh allow me to do do the um let me go check on the status of food. the other screen real quick, <clears throat> and then I will I will do that. Okay, I will bring up the in game. Uh, don't look at this result. <laughs> uh, so first we had dreams of golden streams from Superfed versus Toast Guy, the Rat Bastards. Um, I had predicted. I think we both predicted the Rat Bastards on this one, just because we thought you know inducements. Um, and like the slightly like the gutter runners are were uh pretty useful um but did not work out one zero for super fed like two super rat teams like both of these rat teams are really good going up against each other and the result being one zero um is surprising uh 23 blocks and 30 blocks uh between the two like it was a very punchy rat game uh which is interesting i would have expected a lot more like if if any game was going to be like 5-4, I would have expected it to be this one, but uh, we ended up 1-0. So there's there's a couple ways that could have happened. Either it was very close for most of the game and Superfed is the one who managed to get the touchdown in, or Superfed just kind of controlled the hell out of uh, the other rats and uh, ended up sort of stalling forever. Like they defended on turn the, the first drive and then ended up stalling until turn 16 on the second drive are the, uh, the two ways I expect this to go. Um, <clears throat> but Superfed ended up getting uh, more blocks, about the same number of armor breaks, um, but uh, one more Kaz. Uh, but however, the Kazes came in on a few different players. So Loner Line Rat and a regular Line Rat for Superfed, where one of those injuries was on a gutter runner for Toast Guy. So like, the, the controlling aspect is not necessarily how it could have happened then, because both teams would have had their Blitzers and Gutter Runners available for most of the game. Um, the Blitzers for Superfed are a little bit better. Uh, the Gutter Runners are probably similar. They both have a one-turner. They both have a strip ball player. Um, they... Uh, both have like a another like a secondary wrestle a wrestle piece um they both have a sure hands uh gutter runner um are you just looking at their very similar teams yeah and i was wondering how it ended up one zero because they both have a lot of tools and i figured it's probably because it was very hard for both of them to accomplish anything and then you know one person well got something. like the thing with the thing with like rat and elf mirrors um like not like when you have like a hardcore agi lineup it either ends up as a shootout um, like my game versus the Wood Elves did, or it ends up as like this kind of aggressive game of like keep away scramble. And that's what I expected. Everyone tries yeah. to stall. Like, no, and like that seems to be more what this kind of game went into. Like trying to get good hits in, trying to get good removals, trying to gain some sort of advantage where they feel they can start scoring and still maintain control of the game. Because um, otherwise it's going to shoot out, right? And when you both have one turners, that is kind of a scary prospect. Yeah, um, Carter Cruz did score a touchdown, so it's possible Superfed finally one turn, but I don't believe it. I think it was probably something. Uh, else. Probably. Uh, Although, uh, so the Rat Bastards lost, um, and and they, but they did get uh, some levels out of it. Unfortunately, two of them are on on Linos, but it does mean you can get a new kick line rat, which is a, a useful thing to have. Um, but you already have a, a dirty player one, so I know another one's just going to get block or something. Um, we did level the uh, the Agi Blitzer, the piling on one, so it's another shot at Claw across your fingers. Um, and if you don't get it, you could take Juggernaut or Guard or, or something. Um, but no levels for Superfed. Um, we both predicted uh, Toast Guy for that one, and I don't remember why, but apparently that's what we did. Uh, Toast Guy uh, 
had beaten Superfed in the playoffs. Had inducements, I think. We thought, we thought maybe he had Superfed's number and had had the inducement game as well. Then we had uh, we were going to watch this: the Broken Bone Battalion uh, Super Base versus Not for Science. It fell as quite a doll. Yeah, big game. Super Base taking a three-two win here against Not for Science. Quite bashy for an elf game, thirty-three to thirty-eight. Uh, lots of breaks, especially for fell with Quadadol. Mighty blow tackle on, mighty blow tackle piling on on uh, armor seven, mostly pieces. So, both teams taking five and six KOs respectively, uh, and fell with Quadadol taking five Kaz. So fell with Quadadol taking eleven removals uh, to broken broken bone battalions uh, eight. It's a very heavy so removal game for an elf off. He's taking a ton of damage. Um, 12 breaks into uh, eight removals is pretty good. We did, uh, I predicted uh, Super Base, and you predicted Not for Science, by the way. Yeah. Um, three, two. Oh, it looks like maybe fouls or failed dodges. It looks like um, Not for Science took two extra Kaz and one extra KO. I wonder if there was some fouling going on. All three touchdowns coming from Barry the Broken, uh, the rookie catcher, to take him from zero to nine SPP in one game. So Did you notice that Eldril Sidewinder had an intercept? Uh, pass block. Maybe pass block activating? And, or Nerves of Steel, perhaps. Uh, but El Eldril is pretty useful in an elf matchup. Turns out Hypnogaze is a real good. Um, Lord. Yes, because you can, you can Hypnogaze receivers. So Lord Nathaniel Mar is actually out for his next game with his smashed ankle, which is uh, going to be a bit annoying for Fellas yep. Quadadol. Yep. Yep. Busted, movement busted. He used to be a human blitzer. Now he's, I don't know, an armor busted orc blitzer. <laughs> okay. Is there a, is there a movement eight? strength access blitzer or movements uh six strength access blitzer with eight armor i, don't I mean think so. orcs like you said we're not with eight armor uh yeah. chaos if you count that no like the linemen are movement six armor eight okay. and strength access but that an armor busted orc uh blitzer is better than a i really hate how you try to invent <laughs> other players for things to be oh i know you hate it oh man <clears throat> Apparently, pass block, nerves of steel, and catch were all used on the intercept. Uh, I'm so I don't think Elder Sidewinder has ever felt. I'm really sad that I didn't get to see that now. Um, the uh, the other injuries are just MNGs, but it's an MNG on the one turner, which is also a problem. Uh, MNG on the leap catcher, which is a problem. Uh, MVP going to the Agi lineman, which is a reasonable player to level up, actually considering. It's through whites. It is like a a white with a regen and a ton of doubles. Uh. Okay, are we done finding player comparisons now? Like, he could be a plus movement minus armor dwarf blitzer. <laughs> like, like, yeah, but then he lost Thick Skull. That's, don't be fucking stupid, Ben. Um, the, uh, the Lino who picked up the MVP for Not for Science is pretty useful, actually, considering you're not going to get a ton of SPP, like, sacking the ball with Wrestle Strip. Um, yeah, he's also going to die. So <laughs> you want to you wanna get him leap. Fair. ASAP, yeah. Uh, okay, and then we had... No, I mean, I was, I was agreeing with you. Like, it's a good place for the, the SVP to land. Larkstar and Travel Scrabble, Beard to Death, and Scooby and the Gang. Uh, I predicted Scooby and the Gang, and I think you did as well, yeah. And they tied, so, you know, there you go. Boomer was picked up, uh, just very cheap LOS fodder. Oh, I, I watched a lot of this game. Boomer was picked up, and for the defensive drive, he got... Some some shenanigans, I think, with the kickoff event caused him to be stunned on turn one, and Boomer basically didn't stand up until turn seven. So, like, completely, completely useless. Uh, it was really unfortunate. Um, I think he ended up throwing one bomb in the end, but it wasn't enough for uh, Larkstar to take advantage of it, and he had a really, really bad first half. Uh, he kind of gave up on the ball, it felt like, a little bit, because he was just like, uh, this is going so terribly, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give up and start punching. But the problem with punching Necro, of course, is that Necro are really good at taking punches. But um, in the end, Larkstar did get quite a few removals. Um, four permanent removals in Kaz on the Necro is quite good. Two dead zombies, um, one being a guard zombie, is kind of annoying. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and badly hurt on Muttley Jr. means there was only one wolf, but it was the good wolf. That's true. Well, they're both good wolves. Uh, B Boomer is often not taken for the bomb, so he's more taken for being like 40k and an armor 9 block player that you can put on the LOS and not care about too much when most of your team is armor 7. 
Uh, but sure. The uh, we also induced a, uh, we also induced um, a loner lineman to give us sixteen player or what fifteen players for this game. And then he died. Like at least he died, and not somebody better. Uh, so that's that's, that's very true. MNG on the dirty player tackle guy sucks a bit, but not not a big deal. So, um, Larks are mostly getting out of this one scot free. Yeah. Gets a good amount of SPP on his positionals. Every single positional, in fact, got. Uh, at least two SPP. So while his inducements may not have been useful in terms of winning the game, they were certainly useful in keeping his team very well healthy, which is a, a good use of inducements as well. So yeah. certainly worked out. You know, like you're probably not too upset. You get a tie, and uh, you got a bunch of SPP. Mongoose is loose versus Stauticus. I think we both took Stauticus here because it's a giant Nurgle team versus Chorfs, but it could very well be, you know, there's a lot of claw for this Chorf team, so it's it's really hard to predict this one. Yeah, and it got 23 armor breaks to 11, so you know how that story Yeah, um, It actually didn't get a lot of removals for that. Uh, it only, on 23 breaks, it only caused three KOs and five Kaz, um, but uh, four of those Kaz stuck. So Yeah, I, th I think we had this enough. exact conversation last week, being like, they both have a ton of kill potential. You could e easily predict either way, and just whoever gets the removals first wins. And it looks like Mongoose got them first. So there you go. Yeah, and we were like most of the time the regents stick on the chorfs and do not on the Nurgle. So, but uh, yeah, unfortunate. Out souffleed eating a movement bust. Um, probably still keep him around at movement five, but that's you know definitely uh, tolling his inevitable end there. Everything else was on the uh, the rotters, which is fine. I mean that's what they're there for. Uh, None of them nope. died. Uh, the dirty player is MNG'd and the guard is MNG'd, so the only two useful rotters are out. But you still have four, so it's not like you're down a bench or anything, so you you feel okay about that. Uh, you don't really yeah. like the beast MVP. I mean, it's another chance to get block, but if you don't get block, he's in, like, that last level doesn't do anything. You already have guard stand for him, break tackle him. Juggernaut, maybe? <laughs> no, <laughs> like, it doesn't do anything. I mean, it lets you blitz with him a little bit more reliably sometimes, but, like, what else Six are you going to take? Doesn't he already have? No, he doesn't. You could give you could give him thick skull. Uh, and you know what? I would hate it. Juggernaut isn't that useful either, though, because how often do you, you almost never blitz with the Beast of Nurgle? You don't. You've got a strength five tentacle piece that isn't really stupid, so you could you know use him if you wanted to do some like risky throw a guy on the ball kind of play. Yeah. Um, then uh, just a badly hurt on a chorf blocker, uh, and we leveled the Surehands Hobgoblin with the two TDs, so he gets to pick up block, which is going to be exceptionally useful. <laughs> yes, block is a good skill, it turns out. Um, so level for that Hobgoblin and level for uh, a Rookie Pestigore. So Atomics, or no, this is an Atomics. Staticus. Staticus is happy to finally have no Rookie Pestigores, even though one of them just ate a debilitating stuff. And the, the only block ones aren't terribly useful, like because that, that's also going to be block, unless you want to go aggressive on leveling him and just take Mighty Blow. Um, it's pretty... I would either go Mighty Blow or Wrestle no, there, I think, because you need to replace Outsuflate now. You need a killer and you need a ball carrier. You're less worried about Outsuflate. Desperately need a killer, yeah. Uh, and, like, well, it depends. If he rolled, like, a stat, if he rolled, like, Agi, you take Agi, and then he becomes the ball carrier, and you start leveling Tart Shape Box as a killer. Um, if you don't... Otherwise, you might take Mighty The other blow, option yeah. is you could either take Mighty Blow first to try to accelerate his development, or you could take Block, because then you have two options for ball carriers now, right? So you have two Pestigors with Block, and whichever one levels first between Jelly Roll, Mai, and Tart Shape Box. Uh, you can see... Yeah, right. We're talking way too long about this goddamn... You see who gets any edgy or doubles or whatever, and then like you have another chance at it, basically, before you commit to a ball carrier. Um, so we had Big Chuck versus Ramaset 3-0 for Ramaset. Big Chuck had one of uh, Big Chuck's games where all of his players died. Uh, I mean, we did predict... Uh, the Viltrex Vanguard, just because we didn't think Chuck really had the tools to deal with the edgy game of the elves. But on top of that, all of his players died. <laughs> But, but boy, howdy, did he get the shit kicked out of him. Yep. Uh, not... no, no mighty blow to be seen on the elf team. Too dead. It's, 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 it's taken him like stupid. two seasons to get stupid as the stupid does to be a proper killer, and he just died. <laughs> like, that feels so bad. That sucks. It does. Yeah, and boys will be boys. The newly minted block warrior, almost to get level three, died as well. Uh, Twist of Fate leveling on an MVP is nice. Um, gives him tackle. Um, but yeah, Chuck, uh, that's quite the blow to Chuck's, to Chuck's it's a big team. Deal. The Rana. killer blitzer, huge loss. 
Yeah, Remiset loses a rookie blitzer, but not a big deal. Loses a, a mo eats a movement bust on a blodge blister. That's a pretty unfortunate thing because now we're down two blitzers when I mean, both blitzers um, for the next game, and you're going to be in the hole for whenever you can get the money to buy a new blitzer, and you really want to replace the blodge one too eventually. So it probably felt great for you because you kept your team alive, but man, as like a Nurgle or Chaos player, this is the worst thing ever. It takes so long to level those, and not until like they get to this point. And not having that just makes so many of your games so hard. But I understand it feels very good for everybody who isn't the person who had a dead killer blitzer. Because <laughs> uh, they want that player out of there. The person who had the claw home goat is sad about it. But everybody else is not sad about it. Um, then we have the game we watched, so we don't need to check that out. And then we had uh, Luminous versus Acropolis and the Gourmet Governors versus dazed and confused uh i think e exactly what i said last week is i'm tired of not picking lumi and being wrong uh and so i picked lumi and here we are uh yeah. i think you did the same thing but maybe not with that much spite no i mean i have said that about lumi before and then picked lumi and lost so i'm a little annoyed um but lumi did beat the nurgle quite handedly i've watched a bit of this game um it's really tough for Nurgle to beat. Vampires are surprisingly vampires. annoying for uh, Nurgle. It's like the, the regen on the vampires is the only players that you can really get useful hits on, but they're also all high stats. Um, and especially Lumi's vampires, where three of them are movement seven, and Nurgle just hate things that are faster than them. Yeah, and it looks like Lumi got very, very lucky on his injury dice. He took 27 breaks, including bites. Uh, which resulted in only six KOs and three Kaz. So nine removals on uh, 27 breaks is um, a little low. Lumi did surf four Nurgle players. Wait, that's a lot of frenzy coming from Emmanuel Macaron. Also, Rama said, to be fair, my killer didn't die on a GFI. He strength busted himself on a GFI, which is not dead. He played like three more games after that before I fired him. Oh, you fired him? I thought he no, died. No, I fired him. Um, so Kim Jong Uni took a badly hurt, but he is fine. He's got dodge and plus movement, so he's still the least reliable vampire, even though he is quite reliable. <coughs> um, oh, actually, that's not true. He has a rookie one now that I just keep forgetting about. Borsh Johnson has three SUP from scoring a touchdown, so one more until he can grab probably a stat. How many dodge. of them are from the Frenzy Vampire? Like there are four. Were all four of them from him? Luminous. Uh, and uh, this is new, like the 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 brand new uh, the fifth vampire is not something we've seen had Lumi have this season, I don't think. Um, so that's kind of neat to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was watching a Herring Zord play the clan match for Rotter this week, and he was playing as lizards, and he just like kept surfing the team he was playing against over and over again. But I was really disappointed because he had a chance at a double surf in one turn, and he didn't take it. I don't think he saw it, and I was like, oh, damn it, Herring Zord. The dreamed chain push double surf. I'm playing vampires in clan uh, tomorrow uh, against my undead. I get a rematch versus Stacy. He that's murdered my necro he murdered my Nurgle team, so I'm hoping to do the same thing to his vampires. I think undead are hard. Uh, for vampires, have a tough time with undead. Mm. They uh, they sent them up against me, so you know, um, they chose to do that. Uh, yeah, so uh, Lumi confirming that this is a brand new vampire, so we get to see some five vampire play, which uh, starts to get, it's fun because you have so many vampires, but it starts to get a little uh, rough in the vampire to thrall ratio. But when a lot of your vampires have pro, blodge, and you have, what, five, four or five rerolls, like it's uh, it's relatively, you know, you're not too worried about having to roll just the extra your thralls get removed. Easy, easy. Just just only roll stuns. I think it's so much utility, like five hypnogazes a turn is insane uh yeah like i i was watching I, I was watching lumi play a bit against the nurgle and like it's exactly like rats and lumi played a lot of rats so this makes sense at the start of every single turn basically like especially on defense he's like i think i could hit this ball it's because there's, there's never a, there's never a turn where you look at it and you're like okay well that's when, when, yeah you're when you have like, like four hypno gaze on the field it's it's pretty much always an option to like you can't be safe if like they're... this looks doable this looks doable is always the answer. As, as um, long as they're physically in range of where the ball is, like it's pretty reasonable to try. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of play a little bit like that right now with my broken Nurgle team, considering the only useful player I have is like the two heads Agi for Pestigore. So pretty pretty much every turn is, is that guy in range of the ball? If so, click Pestigore, click ball. If not, figure out what else I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, I, 
I've got a, I, I, as of last game, I now have a strength three, two heads, wrist, wrestle strip ball, got a runner, and I intend to often click him, click ball. Uh, it's pretty, people often underestimate him. They don't expect a, a Nurgle Pestigor to like dodge through a screen to like two to eye blitz your ball carrier. <laughs> but it happens, it's, I've done it several but times. You saw that on few walkers too, where he like cut a corner and did like a three plus two plus with that runner to hit the ball. It was only a one die, but yeah. still. Um, Often teams will not play around kind of elfy nonsense from non elfy teams. Shall we do the predictions before we, uh, we both have to run away? Um, it's a good win for Luminous, though. Keeps him up up in the top uh, of the division. Speaking of, we should look at that first. Super Fed is now five points ahead in div in in uh, spot one, so a win and like a half. I don't know how you want to count the extra two points there, uh, but he's he's pretty solidly in first, and he's gonna. It's very likely, if not impossible, for him to to fall out of the. Uh, the playoffs at this point um and uh he's probably feeling good about that because i think he still has a couple of matches coming up that he's more worried about like i think i think that if that if not po- impossible might be a bigger curse than i've ever laid on super <laughs> well he's gonna hate me for that one but I, I think the the point i'm making there is uh he said on the podcast a couple weeks ago whenever the last podcast was like seven months ago because they take forever to put them out um he said that he had a couple of his harder matchups, in his opinion, uh, late in the season. So being ahead a couple of wins is, is something he's probably pretty happy about because he is worried about the matches coming up. Uh, but Luminous, Super Base, and B-Dog all um, tied for second right now. So we can see why the Super Base win was big, the B-Dog tie rather than a win was big, and Luminous's win was uh, big. Cause... Are we going to have no Nurgle from Div 1 in REL going to playoffs? Oh. That's that's got to be a looks run. that way since you know a couple of seasons after Nurgle there's came only up. one in two B as well in uh, playoff spots right now. There's none in two A and one there's in two B. In yeah. 2A only... Atomics has a shot at it, but uh, he's the only one. Well, he's the only <clears> one. But that that very specific outcome of matches this week caused our second through fourth place to be incredibly tight. Or for... man, you guys are getting wrecked by Stacy. Yeah, well, look at his team. I don't. I don't want to. It's like. Probably a bigger, scarier Nurgle team than Staticus is at this point. It is twenty two sixty. Uh so he's just tearing through everybody. I, I played that team once upon a time. Uh oh right. We do need to count for the fact Superbase has already played this week, so he should be at thirteen points. But even then, um that's tied with Big Chuck in fifth. Toast guy is twelve, uh Ramaset and Mongoose and Staticus all at eleven, so they're all one win away from second place. So down to ninth place is within one win of each other. So second through ninth, they're still totally up in the air. Uh, but Superfed has got a pretty solid lead, and he's happy about that. Uh, Acropolis, not for science, Larkstar. Travel Scrabble, down at the bottom, kind of out of range of things. Ragedorf, not unreasonable, given that there are five playoff spots, but it's starting to get pretty unlikely for him, I think. Oops. Yep, for sure. Predictions. Um, so that tie, that tie from Big Chuck and Superbase is actually really important for keeping things kind of yep. even. Um, so, I mean, that's, that seems like a win for Big Chuck to pull a tie out after losing two key positionals against uh, another top-of-the-table team. So so uh, our first matchup in the Agi off, we have the Voltrex Vanguard and uh, the Rat Bastards. We've got Voltrex Vanguard. We've got Ramaset and we have Toskai. Uh, Tos- These two are both so used to getting inducements. I don't know what they're going to do in a Toskai match. gets, yeah, 30k, which is nothing. Um, so... Star- is going to be a hell of a piece to deal with for the oh, rats, Ramaset dropped uh dropped one of the the rookie blitzer and or he bought a new blitzer the one that died or whatever he bought a new one because he has a rookie one here um i think if i'm reading that correctly so he does flame shadow. so he does have one one blitzer going into this the thrower is very and the catchers are going to be very useful in this uh that is sure hands which is uh pretty useful that uh, an elf team doesn't often have against rats uh, a lot of guard that is pretty yeah, and the um, the strength four catcher is just going to going to. Sorry, Tristan is depositing a mango lassie in front of me, and then oh. explaining why she ordered me a mango lassie, which is that I got salty last time because she ordered one and didn't. I really want to know. So she was like, "Here's your spite mango lassie," because she's incapable of just being a nice. Yeah, person. that's true. I agree with that sentiment. And you're going to tell her that, and then she's going to hate me. Uh, but now I really want a... Uh, I, agree that you're not a nice I really person. want a mango lassie now, though. She said that's okay with a very dangerous smile yeah, on her face. Yeah, I think I'm going to get stabbed next time we're in close proximity. 
Um, so we, I think initially I put down um, Toast Guy for this, but I don't know if I am changing my mind or not. I think um, the fact that neither team is going to have a bench and then there's like the Blitzer for the, the Skaven is a big deal. Um, the Strength 3 Gutter Runner is pretty useful for recovering, but the like getting the ball off the Elves is not going to be trivial with that guard and the uh, the Strength Catcher and or and the Sure Hands. It's not hard to get Elves up. Um, so I, I think I originally predicted Toast Guy here, but I think I'm going to change my mind having looked at this in a bit more no, depth. I think I like the Elves, to be honest. I'm going to change my mind having looked at this in more in more depth. Um, the Rats Without Inducements are going to have a hard time here, I think. I said the Rad Bastards, but I also think the Voltrex Vanguard might have this. Uh, Rage Dwarf versus Grungy Desserts. So we've got 2150 um, Dwarves and 1900 Nurgle, because uh, the, the Nurgle are missing one of their Pestigors. Um, but they still do have their Warriors, two of which are Claw Mighty Blow. Yeah, but Claws just float against this team, so <laughs> That's true. Um, they do have the Claw Mighty Blow Warriors. They don't have the Killer Pestigore, and they don't really have a Ball-Carrying Pestigore, which is a bit annoying. Um, and the dwarves have are not going to care that much about claw, like you said, given half their team is armor eight or lower. Um, once I don't care about the nails, though. How many how many players do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six. They have twelve. Um, okay, so a bench of one, yeah, which they're going to chew through pretty quickly. I think I still like static is here. I initially, uh, oh hey, Bombaloni, he used to be a vamp, a a, a, a thrall on uh, Lumi's team. I remember that because it's a fun name. Um, yeah, I, I initially predicted Staticus, and I think I'm going to continue leaving it there, but I'm not... Uh, I don't think it's like super in favor of him. If he had better Pestigors, I would call it all the time, but he's missing the good Blitzer, and he's missing like a Ball Carrier, so I think Rage Dwarf could make things really awkward with a lot of guard. Well, I think, I think that... Um, Swift Dwarf is going to be annoying. That dynamic is is less relevant against dwarves because it's not like the Nurgle Warriors are a lot s slower than most of the dwarf teams. Um, so. True, but I am worried about the dwarf runners, right? Like, Nurgle don't like movement. That's a movement seven runner. Uh, Nurgle don't have sure hands. Have and that is a wrestle, strip ball, tackle runner. Like, that's going to be annoying. Oh, with the hand of bribe. This seems quite good. Um, I am going to keep the Nurgle, but I don't... I, don't, I would... Uh, call it closer than I normally would in a claw versus dwarf matchup. Uh, Lumi versus Travel Scrabble um, is going to be a big one for Lumi. You would like to win this to to stay in the top of the table, certainly. I feel like Necro are hard for vampires. Uh, I think that is also true. I mean, I I think you will. You have a good chance of winning it, certainly. Like, the strip ball is going to be annoying against no sure hands, and his Pestigors not being good means his blitzing options are pretty limited. Uh, but if you know in a bash matchup the nurgle warriors are going to be often pretty close to the dwarves so it's hard to say but i think you have a good chance um yeah thanks so the the only thing that uh travel scrabble is missing is a zombie right one two three. yeah how are you feeling about this game it's a good question um <clears throat> i initially put lumi down just because i wasn't sure which way to call it and uh i think i'm kind of relying on the table standings at this point to like as a crunch. I wonder if Travel Scarble is ever going to get another Flesh Golem. I wonder if he's just given up on that never, idea. Never a Flesh Golem. Um, the Werewolves are pretty key oh. in this matchup, but that's pretty much all. I mean, Minor 49er is useful because uh, it is Tackle, uh, but the Flesh Golem is not going to be that relevant against the Vampires, frankly. Um, I think the uh, the it's Werewolves great. are the scary bits. And, and Lumi agrees, yeah. The Wolves are rough, but he's oh. pretty thin on players. Uh, what are the induce? The inducements are a thing. Two hundred k exactly. So we could wizard or we could bribe. Wizard. More snacks are being deposited in front of me by the excellent angry person. woman. She is glaring at me and finger pointing very seriously. I think she tried to finger point on the camera, but I don't think she quite made it. Oh, she did. A <laughs> finger darted in for a moment. Are you telling me you've been fingered on camera, Justin? You know, are these Pekora or do they just look suspiciously like Pekora? They're essentially Pekora. It's Bangladeshi food, which I do not know that I've ever had. No, well, I imagine it would be similar to Indian and like. That's fucking racist, Ben. You're canceled. In like, the, I was gonna say in the like spice mixture type like aspects of things, considering it's roughly the same part of the world. 
They're still canceled. I mean, there are about 8,000 countries in Africa that all claim to have invented a particular rice dish, like jollof rice or whatever, right? Like it's, it turns out like when you're from one subcontinent, you kind of have available the same raw ingredients to make food out of and end up sort of developing roughly the same things. A lot of similar things in like the Middle East or the Mediterranean. Yeah, exactly. Like, like no, we invented the gyro. We invented the yeah, like yes. Greek food, like, Lebanese. A lot of very similar food. Yeah, like Greek food, stuff. Lebanese food, and stuff like Mediterranean. You get a lot of similar things. Uh, same with like you know, I would imagine Indian, Bangladeshi. A lot of different African cuisines can be pretty similar. I mean, also India is enormous. It contains many different subcultures. Like, yeah. Cultures and foods. So like, I mean, just straightforwardly cultures. Like, <laughs> well, if you, it's it large enough to contain many nations that's true but um, i was gonna say if you put it under like the indian umbrella but i don't even think that's a fair statement we're talking about I, india. I know In- india is indian like do, do, no interest. It's- oh she was being upset about it i see yes yeah, so we were talking about india the place but even like all the different like you know cultures in india it's probably not even fair to put them under the same indian umbrella in a lot of ways it's pretty disparate um man the this is a, such a total tangent uh but i'm gonna take like 30 seconds um the the sheer number of like regional languages that exist in india is insane to me like there are so many of them um i have a i have a coworker that i work with really closely who's from like a particular area um and ended up we were we were in together in uh, the head office which so we were on a business trip together um, and we ran into somebody else that ended up speaking the exact same regional language as him. And like, not even like a chunk of India regional language. It was like village specific with <laughs> like the languages are that specific. And it was really cool. Uh, like he got really excited about it and it was kind of fun. Uh, but it's, it's really cool how like many there are and how like there, you'd think they'd be like sort of accenty type things, or at least like semi mutually understandable, but they're really distinct, which is super cool. Yeah, I mean, like, um, my friends in Halifax who were in the engineering program, a lot of them spoke Gujarati, which is, like, not what everyone here thinks of when they, like, uh, when someone mentions, like, you know, someone speaking, like, an Indian language, most people think Hindi. Well, that, so, that's like, the, like, like I, sort of official quote language of, like, the country, right, that, that almost everybody speaks to, like, communicate wild, widely, but it's not the one that is, like everybody speaks like natively but if i'm ever lost in uh in like um gujarati i think is primarily spoken in the south um if i'm ever lost i can go up to some indian grandmother and tell her that i'm very hungry and need food because i know how to say that that seems like a really good thing to be able to say to an indian grandmother i feel like you'd get some good food out of that now i just want indian food these not pakara are delicious so they're very spicy in a in a delightful kind of way i just like man i i i love the i just love the like giant plates full of various things to put on rice that have different flavors oh, i remember so the last time i was in town and we went out and ate like 150 dollars <laughs> it's so much fun and it's really good too we all have mango lassies too it all comes full circle anyway let's, let's uh, that's true um okay i'm i think i'm going to take lumi still uh the wolves are scary and the the inducements are a thing but i don't know how much that like wizard and Mutley three is the scariest thing to me frankly and if we can get past that i think lumi wins if we don't get past that i don't think he does so we got to pick something so i i think i'll take take luminous and we have a. Uh, I think we're gonna have an incredibly hard time on offense which is you know always true with vampires but i think it's particularly true in this matchup with these inducements with these wolves so are you going to take travel scrabble or are you just going to not answer that question you're going to eat food and not answer the question i see you on camera i was also making faces. Uh, i have you zoomed pretty far out so i couldn't see the faces um I want to I wanna give okay. to Lumi, but I think he's going to have our time. Uh, Acropolis versus Not For Science. Normally, I'd be pretty in the Not For Science camp here, but we are missing his two best players. Um, we're missing the one-turner. We're missing uh, the blitzer. So he's going into this with a thrower, a guard blitzer, uh, a guard catcher, an agi lineman, and like that's pretty much all he's got going on. 
he's got eight players, so he's not going to have much of a bench minus inducements. He does get 240, so he, you know, Eldrill is probably on the table here, I think. Um, and Dazed and Confused uh, does have a decent amount of tackle. Uh, two of their Pesticores do, and one of their Rodders does, and one of those tackle is also Claw Mighty, um, which is useful for chunking through the non-bench of the Elves. Um, it's really hard to predict this one. Like, if Fellas Quadadel had all their players, I would take not for science. It's so hard to predict when you have this, like, this smattering of players. It's going to come heavily down to do the removals happen or not, and you can't really predict that. Yeah, I think... Hmm. I think I'm going to go with not for science. I believe he gains power as his players get confirmed, and a lot of them just did, so... Um, uh, the bad news for the Nurgle is that they don't have sure hands and the elves have strip ball. The bad news for the elves is that, you know, while there's only like one sort of claw mighty blow, there's a decent amount of mighty blow and a lot of the elves have armor seven. Uh, so it's going to be pretty easy to get through that bench. Uh, initially, I put down um, Dazed and Confused, and I think I'm probably going to leave it there. Okay, I think the elves are going to win. Vogue Bombers and B Dog versus Superfed. We're watching this game. Um, That's, we watched Vogue Bombers this week, but yeah, maybe. I it's it's important care. for the playoffs. You're right. This game is extremely important. It's what first versus second. Uh, first versus one of the teams tied for second, but yeah. Um. <clears throat> plus, it's actually I think it, I think this is a really interesting matchup, and I never get to see it at high TV. I think rats struggle against humans a lot. Um, and but you almost always see this match up at like fourteen, fifteen hundred TV because humans don't exist after that TV. Uh, no one told B Dog oh, that. Oh, hey Andy, how's um, it going? thanks for coming to say hello. Um, uh, where was I? The um, so the humans, yeah, like you said, the the humans can be a rough matchup for the rats sometimes. Um, there's the like the mighty blow tackle blitzers that are you know movement seven in this case one of them is movement six so it's not unreasonable for them to keep up with the gutter runners and be super annoying and when they're not that is you know mighty blow on the armor seven rats yeah it's, it's the speed it's the like the kind of flexibility of their bash and running game yeah, the movement um, nine catcher it can... yeah like rats really like to be able to just easily screen off with a few players and it's a lot harder to do that against humans because they're so much they're almost as quick as you and they can kind of run sacking threats around a lot of your screens so you end up having to commit more players and they're like also trying to outbash you at the same time and it just becomes a bit of a yeah mess. and uh given the uh the tvs the the rats do, do get some inducements but not a significant like it's 140 right that is not a wizard unless we it is the perfect amount it's, um, it's not a wizard unless we pay for it which we probably will um there's no sure hands for the humans. Um, yeah, I, I initially wrote down the rats here, but I don't know if I still agree with that. Like, I, I think it's this is so hard to call, and I'm pretty excited to watch this one. I mean, rats with a wizard with some claw muddy blow. I think it's I'm still in the rat camp, but I think the humans can make a real. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it the way I predicted, which is to to the rats. But I'm I'm interested to see. Um, I mean, this game has already been played, so we can't really predict it. Uh, I did predict it ahead of time. It's worth noting I predicted the Broken Bone Battalion just because of what had happened to Chuck's team uh, before. And, uh, you know, we've seen him lose to Agi before, so I wasn't I didn't think he really had the the tools to deal with another Agi team. Uh, so that's why I predicted Super Base. But it's it's a tie, so we don't really need to we'll look at what happened in that match next week. But um, it would, there's no point in discussing predictions when this already happened. Um, did you do something similar? Because you predicted ahead of time as well. You did the same. You also predicted. I predicted. Uh, I didn't actually know that Big Chunk had had his team decimated. I just um, assumed he would lose to Agi. Then we had Mongoose is loose with Volcano and Beard to Death on Larkstar. 1730 Norse, 1880 Chorfs. This is it is. Uh, the Chorfs have a lot of removal power, um, although the Claw is wasted TV. Haha, <laughs> take that, Chorfs. Blow. It's really that's quite low for chorps, really. Like two palms, sure, but the claw is mostly wasted. They've only got uh they're gonna have a lot of guard. Like this is gonna be a tough bash game for the Norse, but I I, I don't know. I kinda like the Norse here. They're out their dirty the Norse are out their dirty player, which is obviously a big deal because fouling blockers is a lot less attractive when you're fouling AV9 thick skull with yeah. no DP. Um 
I don't know. Like on paper, this looks like it should definitely go to the Chorps, but something in my heart says uh, 130k to the Norse is something, um, and that's that's very likely like Boomer again, just because he's so cheap, and we can put players in the way of those Chorp blockers. Um, like Boomer I, bribe, spend a little. Bit yeah, and then bribe. we get a big bench, and uh, you don't have to worry like the dirty player being out is annoying, but uh, we can still try to get a good fouls and get a lot of them with the bribe. Um, I initially put down um, Volcano and the Chaos Dwarfs just because that's sort of, you know, for exactly the reasons you said, you know, like initially on paper, you just kind of take the Chorfs. Um, but I, I I agree with you in that, like something in my heart says Norse about this one. But uh, I think I think I'll trust my first instincts and leave it with the uh, leave it with the Chaos Dwarfs. I'll go Norse because I like losing. Points. That's fair. Speaking of points, you have about three seconds to, uh, you know, close your screen or prepare for a very big white blindingness while I pull up the Google Doc uh, and then we'll be done. So here's the Google Doc um, as of now. So theoretically, this does include the one possible point from or no, it doesn't because I haven't put in that result. Never mind. Um, so in uh, in rel one, both of us are still doing poorly with negative four and negative five points, respectively. Uh, big Chuck is taking the lead there with eight. Um, <clears throat> although uh, uh, Travel Scrabble is doing pretty good with seven, kind of sneakily coming up the the behind there. Uh, in Rel Two, I'm ahead with uh, fourteen, but Super Fed is very close with thirteen. Uh, Unseen Walker, uh, Yeo, and you all with ten. So once Super Fed is still in the lead with eighteen, um, not in the lead anywhere, but solid performances in both divs, giving him the uh, the tipping comp lead overall. Uh, and what is very important is that I am now beating you by a significant margin. So, yeah, it's true. I feel like we're, we're off. flipping our uh, every, every season. We just flip who wins. It's it's a conspiracy between the two of us to ensure the uh, Wonder Twin A title rotates. Uh, Unseen Walker, though, um, and Yeo at 13 and 14. So they are, um, you know, not out of range of Superfed, certainly, but Superfed doing very well in both the Div and the prediction competition. So Superfed just tryharding everywhere and winning everywhere. So I guess it's working out for him. Um, let's bring up the title screen. Uh, we have to get going and uh, do some other stuff. We've got both have pen and paper tabletop RPG nights coming up, but with different groups. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. This has been week nine. We will be back next Wednesday, ideally, instead of Thursday, roughly the same time for uh, the next week, which I think is 10. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're getting very close to the end of the season, so I hope we're starting to get a little bit excited for playoffs. I know I am. But... Uh, Yep, last week at the minors this week too, so the minors playoffs will be starting next also week. Also exciting. We get to see the uh, the next crop of uh, rebel coaches in their in their playoff run, and one of the playoff tickets for rebel is actually, or the uh, uh, challengers cup Challenger tickets cup. for rebel is uh, decided by that as well. So that's uh, exciting. So we will see you next week, and until then, I've been Sigmunds, and we will see you next time.